If you want to create high quality synthetic voices, I recommend Kokoro. This is particularly useful if you want to generate synthetic data for training voice models, but it's also useful if you just want voices that are in different languages and different accents. The Kokoro model is not particularly new. It's been out for a while now. It's likely based on a style TTS type model that I've talked about in a previous video. It's a very small model with only 82 million parameters, but it's capable just by specifying names to generate voices of different accents and in different languages. You can take a look here at the voices.md file. It shows the main languages that it covers. American English has got the most voices, 11 female and nine male, British, 4-4, four, four, Japanese. Then you've Chinese, Spanish, French, Hindi, Italian, and Brazilian Portuguese. There's more data down here on the quality of these voices. You can see whether they're graded A, B, C, with A being the best. There are high quality voices here in American English, reasonable in British English, and these are the ones that I am going to focus on for this video here. What I want to show you is how you can run this model on your laptop. So you can think about using it as an edge device application if you wanted to integrate it within some kind of device or application that's run locally, no GPU required. It's so small you can easily run it on a CPU as well, even if you don't have a Mac. I then want to show you how you can run this on a server. This is if you want high throughput, you want to generate a lot of voices, for example, if you need training data. Why do I mention training data and synthetic data? Well, if you want to train your own model, you need to have the rights to be able to use the data. And the Kokoro model is permissively licensed. It's got a license that allows you Apache 2 to use the model for commercial purposes. Unlike OpenAI or like Eleven Labs, where you have to read through terms and conditions, and it's not obviously clear you can use their voices to train a model, it is clear with Kokoro. And so if you want to generate data, this probably is not a bad option. Now, one caveat to mention is that it's not it's not obvious or it's not possible to train Kokoro to customize it. If you want to customize your own text-to-speech model, I recommend something like Orpheus or CF CSM. I'll put a link to those videos and how to run fine tuning there. But Kokoro has not been released with all of the surrounding training package that would make it possible to prepare data and give it some kind of a fine tuning, at least not in an obvious way. I'm going to work out of the Trellis Advanced Audio repo. This contains scripts uh, on how to fine tune an inference, text to speech, speech to text, speech to speech, turn detection, and diarization rhization type models. We're going to focus just on Kokoro today, and I have Git cloned this repo over to my VS Code. And uh, let me just turn on another light here so I look a little bit better. Here, I'll just mention a few things on choice of text-to-speech model. These are my current recommendations. Probably some of you in the comments will have um, even better ideas, so do let me know. Broadly speaking, though, if you want synthetic data, I recommend Kokoro. If you want to fine-tune a model, I recommend using Unsloth and fine-tuning either Orpheus or CSM. Orpheus probably has the best VLLM or server deployment, so I would probably lean towards Orpheus for that reason. CSM is probably best for voice cloning. If you don't want to do fine tuning, you just want to give a one shot example. If you want to fine tune a very fast model, you can consider Style TTS2, also a small model, smaller than CSM or Orpheus. You can also look at Melo TTS if you want to generate some voices. But what I particularly like about Kokoro is that it allows you to specify the names of these speakers and then get the corresponding accents. I'll move now to the Kokoro folder here and to the README. I'm going to start by showing you simple inference just running within my uh, terminal here. But first, I'm going to get going a one-click server. It's an affiliate link through one pod, run pod, but it allows you to just set up a server very quickly. You can even try to run a GPU like for 40 cents an hour. I'm going to run a H100 SXM. I'll just run on one and I'll call it here Kokoro server. And we'll get that up and going. And I'll talk about that in the second half of the video, but this is a great option if you want to generate data at high throughput. Going back here, I want to show you how to download and run it locally. For this, you're going to first set up a virtual environment and set up a kernel so you can run in Jupyter Notebook. You could also just copy and run it as a Python script, but I'm going to run a Jupyter Notebook. So I'll copy these commands here, uh, paste them in. I've done this earlier and set up a kernel. Then I'll just open this notebook here and scroll up to the top. Make sure I select the kernel. So I want a Jupyter kernel. 
The one I want is uh, Kokoro. Do I see it here? Yeah, it's already selected. And I'm going to install Kokoro Onyx and sound file. Now you can try and just install Kokoro. You can find that on GitHub, but I just had issues with running it. So I found running Kokoro Onyx was easier. So I'm going to run that uh, to install. And then I'm going to get the Kokoro model and also get the voice pack. So I'll download those into the models folder here. And um, they should both be fairly small. It'll probably re-download them, but already I have them downloaded from earlier. You can see there. And if you're interested, I'll just CC into the Kokoro folder. Uh, I need to be in text-to-speech and then Kokoro. And within there, I'll take a look within models and I want to see the size of them. So let's just take a look inside models. And I think I need to do ls-l. And you can see the Kokoro model itself is roughly 325 megabytes and the voices pack is uh, 28 megabytes. So pretty small there. And I'll just run this model now by saying Kokoro equals uh, Kokoro, which is the import. I'll point to the model and to the voices pack and we can say hello from Kokoro. Let's next move to setting up a server. And I'll run this. You can also control the speech uh, speed, which is nice. If you're creating synthetic data, you could think of varying that to get some nice variation. Uh, you can select a language and you can also select a voice here. Let's uh, take a look at what that comes up with. Hello from Kokoro. Let's next move to setting up a server. It's, it's pretty, pretty beautiful. The voice is very clean, high quality. We can try another voice. Let's try, um, let's try a British one. And I'll try a male one, Eric. Well, let's maybe try a high quality one. There are less, oh, sorry. These are not British. These are male American. Let's try male British. We'll take a C plus George. So let's copy George over here. And um, let's actually try ENUS. I wonder if he'll still have a British accent. I don't know. Hello from Kokoro. Let's next move to setting up a server. Sounds pretty British. Okay, so there you have it. If you wanted, you could just run this as a Python file. Um, in fact, I could do that right now if I just make touch quick py, And if I put this in here, I can now do, let's, um, this is a Python script. And I'll do uv run. And I need to use with, and it's going to be Kokoro Onyx, O-N-N-X. And I can also use with sound file and then quick kokoro.py. And UV is just going to make use of both of those. We check audio. Hello from Kokoro. This is a Python script. Okay, great. So you have three ways there. Uh, two ways to run. You can either run from the notebook or probably even simpler. You can just use uh, quick kokoro that I've added right there. And the next thing I want to show you now is to set up a server. I've already clicked and kicked off that server. It's hopefully running by now. If I check my pods, I can look at logs and it looks like the container is up and running and the server is up and running. It's on port 8880. If you check the pod, you need to expose uh, either a HTTP or a TCP port 8880. And if we want to connect to it, we can just copy this IP address and the port mapping. So. 10821 maps to 8880. I'm going to go across and I'll go to hit Kokoro and paste in, make sure it's HTTP, not HTTPS. And I'm going to run with George. You can try some other voices here. And yeah, let's see what this comes up with. Let's actually pick someone else. Let's, let's, pick, um, let's pick Emma. And I'll do UV run, hit Kokoro. .py. And we're just going to hit the server here. And yeah, it's so fast. Let's see what Emma says. Greetings from Trellis. I'm Emma. So Emma's not able to pronounce Trellis. It's Trellis, according to Emma. But this works. This works very well. We can try somebody else, like Michael. Let's just run that once more. Greetings from Trellis. I'm Michael. Yeah. So you can hit this pretty fast. If you want, you can also run a benchmark. 
So I'll run a UV run benchmark kokoro.py. And what this will do is test out the endpoint at various concurrencies. And the goal is to see as we increase the concurrency, whether we get improved throughput because we're hitting the endpoint in parallel. Now, as I understand, it's a simple batching endpoint and um, it looks like that's failed. You know why that's failed? Because you need to put in the correct uh, base URL. So I'll copy the base URL, go to benchmark and put in next. Can I find the URL? Just scroll down a little bit here. Needs to go here. In fact, you can pass it in as an argument, which might have been the smarter way to do it. And let's try again. So it might take a second for, yeah, so three seconds to do the initial batch and it's incrementing up so we'll get stats. What I was saying though is that ideally you would have a continuous batching server, this is like VLM style, where you can basically combine multiple requests uh, together and kind of stack them even though they're not quite fully parallel because they have different lengths. This is not a this is not a continuous batching server as far as I understand. It's a simple batching, so it will it will uh, inference a batch at once, and then it will start the next batch, and then start the next batch. So it's a lot faster than doing one by one in series, but it's not quite as fast as continuous batching. So what we found here, uh, let's see the statistics. Um, it looks like we can process about fifty five hours of audio per wall clock hour. So we're doing about fifty five times real time speed. And I, let's see, this is just doing a batch of 50 requests with concurrency five. We could probably increase the concurrency. You can type in dash H and it says concurrency should be passed in. Let's see if we pass in instead of concurrency five, let's try concurrency of 20. And possibly we should increase the number of requests if we want to reduce the noise in the measurements. Uh, also, probably makes sense to have a multiple of the concurrency as batches. So yeah, it looks like we're still getting benefit by doing higher batching there than five, although it seems to be asymptoting. So on a H100, it seems like we can process about 78 hours of audio every hour. Uh, so this is the rate that you're able to generate synthetic data. So with that, I will put a link to the original repos down below in the description. If you have any other questions on running a server with Kokoro or generating synthetic data, just let me know down in the comments. Cheers.